How's it going? It's Charles Botenston from Botenston Properties International. Just making sure that uh, we're all good in the background. This is uh, obviously the company logo. Oh, that's nice. That looks cool. So make sure that I'm zoomed in. So essentially, uh, today what I'm going to be talking about is the media and what, what kind of role it plays with the re within the real estate market. How does it affect you? why you should listen to them and why you should not listen to them. So, because I'm so positive, <laughs> we're gonna go with the, we'll go with what kind of role it plays. So you have a marker report that comes out and it's usually compiled, at least the most comprehensive ones are compiled every quarter. So say it's the third quarter. So a large company will, or, uh, a appraisal company or someone else will compile a report, it takes usually about 30 days, then they send it out, another about a week. It's picked up by the news agencies, you know, like whoever, even the large ones, the TV ones. From there, a producer thinks of a story, they then shoot the story, and then they show the story. So between the time that the actual report comes out to when it's actually shown to the public and absorbed or written about, it's usually about four months, five months. And during that time period, I look at every 30 days as a totally new market. And if I'm representing a seller, and knock on wood, I don't think I've had any homes that's, that has sat more than, th actually, more than 30 days this year, maybe. But after 30 days, I always give an update to my seller and I say, listen, it's been 30 days and it's a totally different market. Totally different market. We have niche markets. We have niche markets based first on the area, small areas, well actually not small areas, but each area, West Village, Upper East Side, Upper West Side, Midtown. Within that, within that actual market, then there's the size of the market size of the one bedrooms. And then there's the price ranges. So if you're looking at a one bedroom, you could buy one for 700,000 or you could buy one for $2 million. Doesn't matter, it could have outdoor space, really nice condo, really nice finishes, something like very popular. And obviously the price ranges fluctuate. So when you see that, and a producer who sees this report and makes a story and then gives it to the public, you're receiving this, not only is it lagged, but the report usually just brings up one couple on the Upper West Side who bought and they make a whole broad story about it saying that this is the whole New York City market when in fact it's just that one situation on the Upper West Side. Listen, it could be totally different downtown, which is a lot of the time, Downtown is totally different than obviously uptown, the Upper West Side and the Upper East Side, two totally different markets. Condo and co-ops, two totally different markets. Price ranges, two totally different markets. So when someone says, oh, I bought this great one bedroom and they give out a price range and then buyers who are also in the market around that price range see that, they're like, wow, I can get that? That was one situation. You shouldn't take that as a broad across the market. That was probably in a rundown place that the market's not as expensive. The Upper East Side is not as, not as expensive as downtown. So you can't take that one isolated incident, bring it downtown and say, I can do that price range or I can get that nice place on the Upper East Side downtown. So take stories like that that, that take an isolated incident and, and the writer or the producer just brought into the market because they need stories, they need, inf they need content, they need to produce something. So one is when you see stories like that and they try and put it across the broad range of everyone, be skeptical, probably doesn't apply to you and what you're looking for. Understand that if they start saying statistics like the absorption rate, which is very important, the absorption rate is if all the buyers in that neighborhood or all the, all the buyers in that market, so the Upper East Side, the Upper West Side, Downtown, Midtown, Hell's Kitchen, Chelsea, wherever, 
if all the buyers in that market for that size and that price, and there's no inventory that enters the market, there's an absorption rate where all those buyers, if they bought something, there's a certain amount of months that it would take to absorb all of the inventory. So in other words, six months is a healthy market. Six months of inventory of, say the absorption rate on the Upper East Side is six months. That's a healthy market. That means there's just a good flow of buying and selling. It's a good transactional. No one, the buyer nor the seller, it's neither, neither a buyer or seller market. Once you get below six months and you get to like five months, four months, even three months, that means it's a seller's market because there's not as much inventory. So that means if it's a three month absorption rate, that means that if all the buyers purchased a home, it would only take three months to absorb all of the inventory. That's not a long time, that's a seller's market. Contrary, if there's eight months, that means it's gonna take so, because there's so much inventory, it's gonna take eight months. There's either so much inventory or there's not enough buyers. So if it's eight months, that means that it's a buyer's market because there's a ton of inventory or there's not a lot of competition between the buyers. So it's gonna take a, it's gonna take a long, it's gonna take a longer time. So six months, if it's above six months in the absorption rate, then it's a buyer's market. If it's below six months, especially if it's three months or two and a half months, which has been a lot of the Upper West Side and a lot in the West Village in Tribeca, it's a seller's market. Below six months on the absorption rate means that it's all the inventory is gonna get picked up really quick. So pay attention to those items in the news source, in the news source, in the news sources. But this is where it's a catch-22. When they start saying statistics, find out when that was. Because I see the market different every 30 days. The, New York City, it's quick. It's really quick. Buyers are educated, sellers are educated. Everyone, the, obviously the brokers are, well, most of them, but the majority of brokers are very educated and they know this is the best home, this is the best thing that we're gonna be able to get and they're honest, and obviously you're the one that vets them. You as the buyer and the seller vet them. You trust them, they've interviewed f with you, and you understand their unique qualities, their expertise, their professionalism, so you trust their opinion. So transactions happen. The transaction doesn't take a shorter amount of time, but a buyer finding a property does. So a buyer can find a property immediately they can find it the first time out because they've been looking on Street Easy for two weeks or three weeks and they've narrowed it down to exactly what they want and then they go out to open houses. They've already been pre-approved, they have their broker ready to negotiate, to get into contract, to get the best terms, to put the board package together. So the transaction length from finding a home or saying I wanna buy to finding a home has shortened but from Putting in an offer to closing, it's kind of extended a little bit because of the board process, the board package, uh, especially if you're financing because the bank wants tons of uh, documents, especially if you're 1099. In other words, you're self-employed or a independent contractor or something, that, something like that, like myself. So when someone says, here's this statistic and they, they broaden it to a certain area, ensure that that statistic may not be from, find out when it was. Because to be honest, as I mentioned before, in my opinion, the real estate market changes every 30 days and it surely changes quarter to quarter. So a quarter happens, three months happen, the results are compiled, which takes about 30 days then it's produced, then it's picked up, then it's sent out to the public. So that's 45 days after the report is compiled and that report is from, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, you know. So take it as a grain of salt, take it as a broad spectrum. But I wouldn't also want you to take, so that's one area is take statistics as when were they compiled and then when they take isolated incidents like this one, gentleman on the Upper East Side who bought a 
5,000 square foot one bedroom for $100,000, you know, obviously that's the extreme example, but they, they think of unique cases because that's what brings in the eyeballs. That's the unique content that they need. That's what brings and appeals to the readers. So just consider that. I like the media when it's live and now, right now, like curbed, real deal, a lot, realdeal.com, I think it's therealdeal.com, and curbed.com, they're more live, they're more today, this is what's happening, they are, but reports that come out by like um, New York Times or Wall Street Journal or The Post, or Washington, USA Today, whatever, are usually, there's a lag time because they receive results, they think of a story, they produce the story, it gets picked up and things like that. So trust your agent because the agent is live. They are dealing with other areas of the market, other buyers, other sellers from all over. So they have all these different right now kind of deals. Like the Upper East Side is gonna to be totally different than the downtown market. The Upper West Side is totally different than the East Village. The Upper, upper West Side in the two and three bedroom market is insane. It's completely crazy and competitive. So if you're looking for that, your Upper West Side, two bedroom and three bedroom competition is gonna be a lot less on the Upper East Side. So don't mix it up. It's between the markets, it's between the sizes. The one bedroom market isn't as competitive on the Upper West Side as a two bedroom or a three bedroom. So just get that through. Um, always discuss something that you've heard or seen immediately with the agent because you want to ensure that you're both on the same page. That's the biggest thing is you're the one that's interviewed and trusted the agent. So you obviously value their opinion Anyway, I like the media, but only the ones that are live, not the big outlets that include mass, they have mass followings. Curbed and The Real Deal are Manhattan. They're not across the nation. They're not across a spectrum that they need to appeal to. So understand it, always go over with your real estate agent. There's two, er there's two different types of sources. One which is a individual case and then that person just and then that reporter just broadens it and says that that one indicated isolated incident is across the whole market and the other is when they give statistics find out when that is because every 30 days in my opinion it's a totally different market let alone six months completely different market so anyway i'm charles bowenston at bowenston properties international I actually uh, shot a video before. Hopefully, I'm, I was zoomed in the whole time because the video that I just shot, I was not. And uh, I had to reshoot it. I actually like this video a lot better. So if you have any questions, definitely leave comments in the comment section, obviously, or on Instagram, which, are, which is our favorite social media website or social media app or whatever you want to say. And... Follow us there or subscribe to the videos. We put out a video every single day. If you want a topic discussed, you obviously know I'm gonna be very honest with it. I don't beat around the bush at all, and I want to ensure that you're as informed as anyone at any time because there's no point in going into the market with just fluff or ill-advised information or advice. So if you have any questions, obviously leave a comment, subscribe to the videos, and I shall see you guys tomorrow. I make a video, as I mentioned, every single weekday. So tomorrow's going to be Friday, October 16th. So it should be a special day. I'll see you guys then.